Welcome to the podcast, Bo. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you very much. Uh, just finished work, so free for the evening. What about yourself? It's it's lunchtime over here. We're just midday, so it's been a good one so far. Okay, then. So I like to just go back to the start with my guests and um, ask them, where are you from and how did you get into welding? So currently I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, but originally I was from Colorado and moved out here when I was 17, but then moved all around with me. I, I went into music after high school and college. So lived out in LA, lived out in Nashville, but moved back here in 2017 and was a musician for years and years and years. And then when the pandemic hit, I had to find something new because the music industry kind of got decimated and there wasn't a lot of relief. So I was like, all right, let's look at different avenues. And I'd always been super fascinated with welding and wanted to just try it out. So I took a summer class that was just like a four week long intro to welding. And I was like, I'll try it out. Let's just see how that goes. And first day I was like, yep, this is what I've been missing my whole life. And so like I signed up and just went and got my whole, did the certificate program and uh, just through school got connected with, I, I was watching weld.com videos uh, because it's super helpful to be able to see stuff up and close when you're learning. And sometimes when you're going through school, it's hard to see, like if you're in a group getting a demo, it's hard to really see what's going on. So every night after school, I would go home and I would watch a whole bunch of videos to try to get closer to understanding what I'm supposed to be, supposed to be seeing and the puddle and all that kind of stuff. And then through following weld.com, they did a virtual welding and uh, virtual welding competition. And I, I decided I was going to enter, see if I could go in there because it was a 3G uh, open root stick plate test that you had to do and just film yourself doing the whole plate like root to caps and so I did that and they liked it and so then I ended up coming in second in the competition and they liked my personality and they were like hey you know when you're done with school head us up maybe we could do some stuff together and so I got out of school started my own company doing like restaurant and bar work because being a musician I've that's where I live, you know, yeah. is playing in restaurants and bars, breweries and stuff like that. And so I was doing that kind of work and then started doing some just like small project videos with weld.com. And then eventually the podcast, like the host that originally started it, she left. So I was like, Hey, who's going to take over the podcast? Cause I, I mean, I have a recording studio at my house, would love to just take that over because I let audio is my thing I, and I just love talking to people about welding so it was the best of both worlds and so that took over that and was doing that full time or just for the past year I've been doing that with weld.com and then I just recently took up over social media for weld.com as well so I'm full time watching welding videos talking about welding going and seeing welding like that's that's my whole life now all about it Okay, so do you know anybody who was a welder, anybody in the family a welder, or is it just something you were interested in? My grandpa, he had a tractor, and he would fix the tractor with a, one of the Lincoln Buzz boxes. Like, that's that's the only welding I ever had. Like, And then after learning how to weld and inspecting them all, I was like, hmm, you know, <laughs> this is a farm and weld, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Like a farmer's weld is different than a, like just structural, like certified welder weld. But it, that was as close as I had, man. Like I didn't know any welders. I didn't have any of my family that was a welder. I just was interested. So went into it and now I have a whole new family of welders out there. Yeah. Okay. Then. So how long did you spend in school? What was the process um, of that? So school for me, I did a certificate program, which was just kind of a uh, more of a get you comfortable with stick, MIG and TIG, and then get you out there being able to get a job. And so it was two class. I took a stick plate, TIG plate, uh, MIG plate, and then I did uh, stick pipe 
and Tig Plate. Oh, well, I already said Tig Plate, but and then uh, that was about that was supposed to be the extent of the that degree there. So, but I was interested in getting into sanitary process. And the only way to do that, you had to go and do, I did TIG pipe and uh, certifications practices for the summer. So like, that was like, I had to go and do the monster coupon and then move from that into stainless work. So that, that was my training. And then I just went out and started doing custom fabrication and it was, it was fun. Okay. And how long did that process take through school then? It was just a, it was a little over a year, like a, maybe 13 months it took for me to get all the way through. Okay. So then, sorry if I'm asking, I don't know, obviously compared to the UK, would that be similar to an apprenticeship then? Is it something similar? I, I wouldn't say apprenticeship uh, because an apprenticeship, you're going out there and you're experiencing different environments and different types of welds in the field, you know, different positions. I would say it's more of just a, like, they get you ready for going and taking tests to get jobs. Like, cause over yeah. here, certification is very confusing in the U U S because everybody thinks it's like, Oh, I'm going to go to school, come out a certified welder. And that's not the case. Like you go and they teach you how to pass the test for each company. They have their certifications that they can certify you to be a welder for them. And so every job you're going to, you're going to have to retest. So that was like a big misconception because like all through school, I was like, I'm going to go be a certified welder. I'm going to go weld anything, you know. And then I learned real quick afterwards, like it's very confusing here. But yeah. Yeah, that kind of sounds like coding, we would call them over here. So for every company you go to, you would test out on whatever material you have to, whether it be stainless, mm -hmm. carbon, aluminum. But those codings don't norm generally pass on to the next company then. So you would always retest for every company anyway. Yeah. And it, like, as far as an apprenticeship, like I worked, so when I was in school for welding, I worked at a steel yard and then I worked at a fab shop, but that was just not part of the school. It was just me being like, I need to get experience, like understanding, like the steel yard was great. Cause I learned a ton about metal, a ton about material handling and just like, you know, pricing. That was a big thing that I was very confused about. You know, it's like wood, you can go to Home Depot and pick it up or like your regular hardware store. But as far as materials for metal, it's a little, you could go to the hardware store, but it's going to be immensely more expensive than if you go to like a steel yard or something like that. So it was, it was really helpful learning the different types of materials and pricing and expectations for when I went to go and bid jobs for people where it's like I know I, I have a pretty good idea of what this is going to cost and how quick I can get the material and you know but and then working at a fab shop that helped me with just learning fabrication because I didn't have a course in that part of the part of the certification that I went and got at school or the certificate there was fabrication if I went for a longer term in the degree program like they have like a diploma but I was just like I'm just gonna go work in a fab shop and that's gonna be my class you know and it, it definitely was I learned a lot <laughs> yeah obviously college is extremely important um but it's actually when you're out on the job and you're welding whether it's in different environments different positions I feel like that's where you learn the most because no matter how much you read about things or, or practice in a, in a bay in college it's not until you actually get on job experience that you realize how important that is yeah oh and seeing what the applications are you know it's like we all know the different positions but until you see it in the field you're like okay yeah the only way for me to make that is going to be an overhead weld and it's like because a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just put everything in one place and weld it out? It's like, sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's there and you can't move it, you know. So that's why you have to learn how to manipulate metal and different types of gravity forces, you know. Yeah, I used to work with somebody who would always say, you can't turn a ship over to weld it down and. <laughs> that's what he would say, which is so true. That is very, very true. But you can go under it. You can go under it. Definitely can. <laughs> okay, then, so... When it comes to welding, tell me what's your favorite type of welding or, or, or what what did you find the easiest when you were learning? Uh, I mean, the easiest was definitely MIG welding. I love MIG welding too. Like that's that's one, one thing I'd love to talk about is everybody in the industry over here, at least, like the only kind of welding people are like, yeah, you know, the only types of welding are stick or TIG 
Like those are the only real processes, you know, but it's like, but I love MIG because it makes my life easy and it's quick and uh, less to clean up. But my personal favorite is stick welding. I, I still am a huge fan. I just, I find the puddle to be the most satisfying in my opinion. And it's just takes a lot of skill. So I like challenges and I like challenging myself to try to make a really nice stick weld, especially pipe welding with stick like that is is one of my favorite things yeah it i think for especially for me anyway stick was probably the was definitely the one that took the longest but then it is the most rewarding as well i would say because as you said if you're doing a, a six inch pipe 6g or whatever and you get a nice with a stick it's really good isn't it oh man it's so fa it's so, it's very satisfying like and it, the slag peel is my favorite thing. You know, you can have a you can have somebody tell you that you did a good weld, but when your slag tells you that that was a good weld, like that's it's so satisfying. You know, just curls up and you're just like, nice. Don't even have to chip away at that one. Yeah, because we used to do a lot of um, cellulosic uh, welding as well. Sort of, we would put a root in with a cellulosic and then fill and cap with a low hydrogen rod i don't know if you've ever done any of that store oh yeah all day all day, yeah. all day. <laughs> like that was that was the first i like i love the 6010 and 6010s yeah that's it yeah good old 60 6010 route and then 7018 out like i i love doing that it's i love and even combo welding like that was at the end of the program we did the tig route tig hot and then 7018 out and i i dig that but there's just something about whipping a, a root in with a 6010 rod. Like you can't beat the sound that you hear, you know, especially on pipe like that. Like it'll tell you, you can hear that it's, it's going in and you're just like, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah. When I, you, when you say that, I can, I can picture one, one of the guys would always say you can hear him singing. That's, that's yeah. what he would call the root because you can, as exactly as you described then, you know, you, you don't have to even look because you can hear it's going in, can't you? Yeah, I, it's, I, I, I'm like nerd out about that type of stuff because I tutor at the school that I went to, like I'll go in and help out and just try to help people have a different perspective. You know, I think that's the main way to teach people is everyone can say it, like show you over and over and over again. But the more ways someone can describe the same thing, it's I, I feel like that's immensely helpful, you know, because my words are sometimes I'll say something that I love metaphors and metaphors are the way that I learn, you know, if I can't remember something, it's just trying to describe it. But the singing, like, that's a great way like that in my mind, that helps me remind, like helps me understand what you're talking about. But, um, but yeah, going over and teaching kids and just really telling them, listen, like you can listen to it at you no matter what process it, well, I guess TIG, you can't really listen that much, you know, but yeah. as far as like MIG and stick, like they really talk to you. Like you can listen and understand what's going on with it. Even if you can't see it a hundred percent, you know, I can hear if I'm running too cold or if I don't have enough wire speed uh, on MIG, you know, and even with stick, like if you're putting in the root and you're not hearing it talk to you, you're not hot enough or there's some sort of complications. I just love being able to have that, that kind of relationship with the weld. It's like I, talking and listening. We're talking and listening. Yeah. It's, it's strange because I remember sometimes if, especially when I was an apprentice and, and I'd see people turn the amps up maybe two, three amps. And I'd always think like, obviously you can't make that much of a difference, but then when you actually understand and when you're a little bit more experienced, you know, just a, a couple of amps up or down can make a massive difference, whether it's the sound or how the, you know, how the root goes in or, or how the, how the, how it's penetrating. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, just a little tweak, you know, yeah. and that's kind of a relationship like school, uh, the school I went to, there's, tons and tons of bays like it's a very large program and so we each like every booth has a machine but a lot of the machines will act different and same same goes out in the real world you know not every machine is going to really react the same way or it's not going to run exactly the same way so i always tried to use a bunch of different ones so i understood you know that relationship of oh this is why 
hey, this is why this isn't. Let me try to turn this up a little bit. Oh, this isn't working this way. It feels like I'm way too hot, but I'm at the same amperage I usually run. Let me just try to turn it down. Oh, yep, that was correct. This machine must be running hot, you know. And troubleshooting, I feel like that is a huge part of welding education that would be really beneficial to people. Uh, like it's just kind of touched on in schools, at least the school I went to is they'll, they'll show you a little bit, you know, to just general troubleshooting. But I think like a deep dive into like, this is everything that could possibly go in ground. You know, like, I think that would be super helpful. Yeah. Cause sometimes it can just be the tiniest little issue, which you probably wouldn't even think of, you know, whether you have a hole sort of in one of your cable, you know, one of your gas hoses or could just be something, you know, so slight and that can make a massive difference on the performance of the weld. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even like MIG, one of the big ones that like I was in school and I was, I was working and I, I just kept not, it wasn't running right. And like, I checked my contact tip, checked my nozzle, checked my gas, like uh diffuser, checked my liner, checked all this kind of stuff. And then it, I made sure we weren't bird nesting. I was had the right temp, like I had the right tension on the drive wheels, all that kind of stuff. And then it, all it came down to was that the like guide going into the liner was clogged. Like it was just clogged. And that like, yeah. that's, it took so long to just get there, you know, but just showing like the different places that you can go. Like that's, I, I feel like that is super helpful to teach people and because you don't want to be that guy in the shop where it's like the machine doesn't work. And then you're just like, Hey, can you fix this? You know, be the person that can diagnose and troubleshoot. Like that's super valuable. Yeah. Okay. Then. So for anybody watching or listening, can you explain a little bit about well.com for me? Yeah, absolutely. So well.com was started years ago and it's, it's gone through many different, uh, phases like there was Mr. Tig, who was kind of in the original, uh, original rendition, and he was just teaching people out of his garage, and then it grew, and they have they had like a spot they were shooting all these videos at, and just making welding education videos to just try to make either like people trying to learn make it easier for people to learn, and then also like giving people in the teaching sector more resources to teach people with you know it's like if you can't get everybody nice and close it's really nice like i was telling you earlier having a, a video where you can watch and see exactly what's going on and then since i've joined well.com we started like there's all kinds of different social media places for people to go and so what we wanted to develop was an app like where it's like hey you got networking you got jobs you got videos like all of our educational videos are in there got a weld calculator you've got um, a marketplace to sell your stuff like all in one place like that was our big focus over the past couple of years is developing this getting this out just to try to make people's lives easier in the welding world you know and so that's a big focus of what we want to do is just try to make people's lives easier make it easy as possible to learn because like we were talking about earlier the the amount of people that are in this industry isn't a lot. And then it, also the people that are really skilled in it, they're retiring. So all of that knowledge that they've kept in their heads, because there was this kind of scarcity mindset in the welding world where it's like, if I teach you how to do it, you're going to take my job. You know, yeah. it's like that went on way too long. And now it's like, no, please teach us because we got to get this job done. So that's, that's what we're trying to translate into these videos is, you know, not just your basic, this is how you run a pipe. You know, it's like any kind of idea or like any kind of problem you can run into. It's like, we're trying to solve them. We're trying to help educate people on. And uh, right now we just started like a new one where people ask questions in the app all the time. It's like, it's like, oh, I'm having a hard time running this. Can people give me an idea? So we're starting like a series where it's like, we look at questions and then make a whole video explaining it. You know, it's, the thing that well.com is trying to do is just help educate the workforce and help get people into the workforce, especially like the younger generations too, because there's this hard divide between like 
older generation and this new generation going through school right now when it comes to communication like people are like oh these kids these days they don't want to work kids these days they don't want to listen it's like no there's just a break in communication you know it's like there's still people and there's still valuable workers you know it's just you gotta find a way to communicate and it, it it's just kind of let go of some of your ways to help usher in this next generation and that's a big passion of mine is like try to show people you know welding's not just like the super dangerous super dirty like only for big burly guys with beards you know it's anybody can be a welder there's all kinds of different applications industries like inside of welding and you have a place like and coming from the artistic background like i've been a bartender and server and musician, you know, it's like your musician comes after, okay, these are the things that really pay me a bunch of money. You know, it's like, this is how I get by. And then I make music because I love it, you know, and people in the arts in the service industry, when your passion doesn't pay for your life, having a trade is such an awesome way to just be like, oh yeah, I'll go work for this company for a month, make a bunch of money and then go out on tour and spend it all and then come back and go get another job, you know, but if it's because you have a trade skill. It's not because you can go and like, I could go bartend anywhere. That's a trade skill, but like welding is way more in demand. Like I, it's not hard for me to go and get a welding job compared to a bartending job or even a serving job, you know, at a good restaurant, like they might be staffed up. You might only get one shift, two shifts a week. I, it's the the work there and i'm trying to help people in these other industries and just understand that there is a way for you to make a life you know just because during the pandemic the, the i had a really hard time because a lot of my friends were just independent contractors in the music world and there was not a financial aid for people that were independent contractors especially if a lot of your your uh, money was cash under the table, you know? So I had a bunch, like I had nine friends in the first year, just like check out. And so I, uh, it's a big passion of mine. Just be like, Hey, you know, there's, there's a way to make your life better with this. You're like welding. It's hard to learn, but if you're a musician, you already got half of the bit, half the problem is solved because it's about tempo. Like if you can play to a click, you can weld a bead, trust me, you know, but it's just that that's been a really big passion of mine with weld.com. Like, cause they want to reach this next generation, more people get more people into the industry and just be a resource. And that's what I want to be too. It's like be a resource for people that don't, know what to do with their lives you know or just like need something to help them get by you know welding it it helps yeah exactly i think so we as a whole as an industry need to do what we can to bring the younger generation in and if that's moving more towards social media or because you know a lot of of the younger generation now use social media or like to play play on computers or to play games we have to find ways to incorporate that into learning and i and i did speak to somebody who's um a big advocate of vr welding a few weeks ago um <laughs> not not something i've been involved in but he, but he reckons it's very good for learning i don't know if that's something you've ever come across there uh, i've i've come across it i've never actually tried it i've always oh, wanted to I'm... try it but i know that you know out here there's the american welding society which is the people who are in control of all the codes and standards and they go out and they actually do tours, like going to like state fairs, things like that, where there's a bunch of people who aren't necessarily there because they want to learn how to weld. And it's all about exposure to the industry and it's through VR welding. Like they have a bus that has VR welding set up so people could come in, try it out and just get that kind of spark of excitement going and try to get them into the industry. But as far as VR welding, like we've talked about 
like kind of the the app idea that was our kind of transition into this next generation where like everybody loves apps like especially this new generation they're on the phone like let's give them something where it, they can have all the resources they need right there on their phone you know and eventually it'd be cool to have like virtual reality like an oculus simulator or something like that like that'd be awesome that's just like a lot of development and i'm not that guy <laughs> No. Okay. So with regards to the app, how many users do you have roughly currently? Right now we have around 16 or 17,000 people in there, wow. which is, That's it's amazing. growing. Like it's only, it's like a year, a year of just promoting, just being like, Hey, we have this for you to try, you know, and there's different levels of membership on it. Like there's the free version where it's just like, come check it out. Come see what's in there. There's a basic version where I believe you start getting access to like more videos and uh, like communication. So you could sh shoot people messages and stuff. And then there's the premium, which like you have, everything's there for you. Like, and like the basic is a dollar a month and premium is five bucks a month. So it's like, it's not that ex it's not wow. expensive, you know? And it's just like, we, it takes us a lot of money to try and develop this. And we keep adding stuff, you know, it's like, we want to keep adding as much content as we possibly can to help people. So that's, it, it's funny. Like everybody's like, well, we'd have Instagram and it's free. Oh, we got YouTube and it's free. You know, it's like, yeah, but this is hyper-focused and this, like, you don't have to search, like you have everything in one spot and it's, it, it, we're definitely trying to grow people like in the community like it's so cool to go in every day and just like swipe through the feed and see what people are doing because like there's people working on stainless there's people doing fabrication there's people out doing rig welding there's people all across the industry in there and it's just i i'm fascinated by it because i every day i could just go in and look and find somebody new that's found it or somebody that is just putting out like really motivational stuff and a big part of the app, the thing that we wanted to foster in there is positivity instead of negativity. Because a lot of places like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, like you put stuff out there. Like if someone's just learning how to weld and there's like, man, I'm really proud of this first weld I did. Check it out. And it's just like first comments like undercut, you know, it's like there's like all these people that just troll, you know, yeah. and it's like we want to help people learn. So like you post a question or you're like, hey, I'm having a hard time learning this process. You have CWIs, you have like just certified welders, you have all kinds of people in the industry that want to share their knowledge and help you grow, you know, and that's what we're trying to foster is like a safe space to learn how to do this thing that's incredibly hard to do. So, you know, uh, that's, I, I'm, I'm passionate about it because I, I believe in it, you know, I believe in the goal, you know, because I want to help people. That's my goal. I want to help people in the industry. I'm not the greatest welder in the world. I'm not trying to say I'm the greatest world welder in the world, but I am absolutely obsessed. And I am passionate about showing people how cool this thing is because I didn't know for 33 years. I didn't know for 33 years how cool welding was. And then I got a taste of it and now I'm like obsessed, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and I think, you know, five, $5 a month isn't much. I probably spend more on my morning coffee, you know, yeah. the train station on the way to work. So, you know, when you think of it in that way, it's not a lot of money. Um, well, obviously, you know, everybody has their own budget and, and whatnot, but five, I think that's very good. Do you have many users from the UK or is it the US only? It's worldwide. worldwide. Like we got, it's, it's so crazy to even see that aspect of it is that I feel like it's, even more popular outside of the U S you know, cause we got a bunch of people overseas that are in the app too, you know, and I'm seeing posts cause I'm in there every day, just seeing what people are doing. And I want to like, just comment back, just try and help as much as I, I can, but I see people all over the place, man. And it's, it's just really nice to see because you know, we wanted to be a global welding resource. Like that's what we have been saying for years is like, we want to be this global welding resource. So like, you go and you want to learn how to weld and, but you're not in the U S that's okay. Like we want to have, like, if you're in Canada, we want to have your CWB stuff. If you're overseas, we want to have like ISO 9,000 standards. Like how do I get up to that? You know, we want, we want to just help 
like because welding even though you're over in the uk and i'm here in the us we it runs the same you know it's the same thing you got to do to try yeah. it. like it's all the same it's it doesn't matter where you are in the world like it you can't change it it doesn't get lost in translation it's just like this is how you do it you know yeah no it's definitely something that i will check out because i'd never really used any sort of social media for welding i'd only ever learned off you know some of the older guys in in the workshops so or so it wasn't until i started the podcast you know a few weeks ago a few maybe a few months ago now that i'd started you know coming across well.com or coming across some of these Instagram accounts or, you know, it, it didn't, it wasn't something I even knew about. Um, yeah. So it's kind of it's, opened my eyes a lot over the last few months. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Like I, I, I come from like being in the music world for so long. Like, I mean, social media is huge. Like, and especially, you know, you're a starving artist. You're just trying to be like, Hey, check out my stuff, check out my stuff. And then I go into the welding world and I see like, there's like welding influencers and there's like people that's just like all they do is just make cool welding content you know I was like that is amazing like I just think that's amazing but the fact that it's helped teach people you know like that's a lot of people they'll say they're like yeah I wanted to learn how to weld so I went on YouTube or I've just been on Instagram like and I'll ask people questions and they answer you know and it's it's something I used to hate social media. I mean, I still do kind of, you know, but yeah. it's just like, I, it's just constantly having to like something remind me that something, someone needs my attention, you know, it's like, Oh, here's another notification. I don't like notification aspect of it, but the, the way that you can just be connected to someone like you and me right now, it's like yeah. you worldwide instantly. doesn't matter. doesn't matter if you're in the same same town same state like you can learn from somebody and i think that's an invaluable so yeah i think that's probably been the hardest part for me trying to push the podcast is is knowing how to promote it or how to get it out there because i don't really have much of a social media following myself it's not something i massively use um yeah. obviously i've created accounts for for the podcast and, and that's the way i'm doing it on facebook but even still, I, I still get anxious or worried about posting all the time. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to be posting all the time on people to get fed up of me posting about it. Um, you got to just let it go. Like, that's yeah. that's what I've learned. Like, is you did it, like, because I've been in bands, I've done solo stuff, I've been in welding. Like, and when it comes to social media, I have anxiety about it. You know, yeah. I get anxious. I get so anxious because it's, it's like, oh, I got to post or I got to do this. You know, it's, it's more like you got to let that go and just do what you want to do and just just don't be afraid of putting yourself out there because you got to the way that it makes me feel better is thinking about, OK, there's probably like 13 million posts that have just gone out in this section right now, uh, this second right now. So it's like there's plenty of stuff that I'm going to get lost in the mix. So if I'm going to constantly put it out there and tell you what I'm doing and show you what I'm doing, if you don't want to see it don't follow it. You know, it's, it, you got to just kind of be like, this is my thing. And if you don't want to see my thing, don't follow it. You know? Yeah. I think I can kind of remember the first time I posted about it um, and it was on LinkedIn and I thought, you know, as you said, I was really worried what's going to go on, but then I had such a great, you know, everybody reply in saying, this is a great idea. And they kind of took a lot of that away then, but no, it's definitely been, been a good experience because I've learned a lot as well, speaking to different people from different backgrounds, different industries. And it, it makes you realize how varied welding is because you, you kind of get stuck in your own job or your own position and you think that's normal, but everyone has their own experiences. Oh, yeah. Well, and it the <laughs> I, I don't remember what it's called, but thinking about like how your experience is completely different than my experience and everybody's having everybody's living a life where they 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 know what their life's about but like you have no idea what it's like to be somebody else and that's what i love about podcasting you know i didn't really know what to think about podcasting until i started doing it and i was like oh my goodness this is so valuable to me just because i get to learn from people like you people like guests on the podcast like just hearing where they started how they got into it you know things that they learned along the way but also just getting a glimpse into who they are as people like that's what i like about podcasts is that you 
you get to actually just listen to someone talk about what they're passionate about. And if they're not passionate about it, like you probably wouldn't reach out to ask them to come on the podcast anyway, you know? <laughs> no, exactly. If someone's going to be willing to take time out of their day to speak to you, then, you know, they don't need doing that because either they're passionate or they want to help others, you know, otherwise you're not going to give up an hour of your time to sit and, and speak to a random guy from the UK about hey. welding. Trust me. I know, it, man. Like I, I, I dealt with imposter syndrome for a long time. Yeah. Because I was just like, I, I'm not, I'm not the world's greatest welder. I don't have the most knowledge of all the welding, you know, but I'm passionate about it and nobody cares. Like it's, they're not just like, all right, show me your certs before we talk. You know, it's like, I, no one's doing that. They just want to share their knowledge, share their experience and try to help, you know, and podcasting is going, it, it's the future of, 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 entertainment you know like there's video podcasts there's audio only podcasts but no matter what kind of podcast it is it is media that is decentralized and it is just raw you know and everybody's getting fed up with watching cable tv or watching network tv and even the streaming sites you know it's like there's four million and i'm spending who knows how much money on all my different subscriptions every single month to just make sure i can watch this show or that show or that show and but then there's podcasting where whatever you want like whatever you want in the world like it that's what i love about it it's like am i interested in uh what's the best chicken noodle soup recipe you know and there's like chicken noodle soup podcasts oh there's one you know like you can learn about whatever it is in life from podcasts and because everybody's still confused what a podcast is you know it's like a lot of people are just like what what is what is a podcast you know it's like it's just people talking about interested like a topic it's just a topic of interest and people talking about it and, or showing you about it if it's a video podcast you know and but it's just a way put it on on your commute and see how fast that commute goes like I love audio drama podcasts too. Like I I'm obsessed and I want to make one someday, but I know how big of an undertaking it is. And, uh, but like I'll drive like nine hours to go out to Nashville a couple of times a year to just go play shows and see people. And I'll listen to, a, I'll find a new podcast and listen to the entire season, like there and back. And it's like, wow, yeah. you know, all those hours disappear real quick. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I've been listening to Serial is a podcast I've been listening oh, yeah. to. That's American. And I only, it's, it's quite quite old and I only got into it a few weeks ago and I've been listening to that a lot on my commutes lately. Oh yeah. No, that was like, that was like the found that, that podcast and just history of podcasting, it wow. changed everything because it made everybody, it exposed people to what a podcast is because yeah. there'd been podcasting forever and you know there's a couple of people that had popular ones but serial just made it like mainstream um, and like, what a podcast that was incredible yeah yeah i mean i like Very... i'll have to send you some of my favorites like yeah. just because also finding people who are podcast people it is it is hard man yeah no i'm always looking for something to listen to especially on the commutes as you said it just makes the commute so much easier at the moment, it's probably 45 minutes each way for me. So I like to just switch off, listen to something. Yeah, I, I, you can just, it, it makes it so much easier to drive places. I don't like, I like driving places now because I'm like, yeah, I'll pop on this podcast. But if I'm in the car with somebody else, you know, sometimes they don't want to listen to a podcast. Like my wife, she is a saint because she loves listening to music and I love listening to podcasts and she will just, she's she'll listen to the podcast for a long time but yeah. we'll break it up with some music so have you interviewed any guests from the uk on the podcast i sure have uh i've interviewed actually arc one calvin gordon uh yeah. he he was on your podcast right before he came on my podcast yeah he, he was, was like yeah i was on my first podcast the other day and i was like hey i'm supposed to be going on it too so yeah, he's well. He's from London. We've we've never met, but he's he lives not too far away from where I'm living at the moment. That's awesome. And then there's a uh, so TM Designs. Uh, he do, does like sculptures and stuff. Talk to him. And then there's Rusty. Oh man, I'm trying. Rusty Creations. He's also over there. Does okay. uh, like scrap. He makes everything out of 
horseshoes, which is really cool. Really? He's like, yeah, he's got a friend who's a farrier and sells him like horseshoes for cheaper and he loves it. And it's really cool work. And then I'm trying to think of who else I've had on from overseas. I mean, from the UK, that's, I think that's all the UK people that I've talked to. But if I didn't mention you and you're on the podcast, I still love you. There's just so many weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, how many, how many episodes are you currently on? Um, so right now, like I just, I think out, we have, I think we just passed a hundred and ten. 108 or 109 episodes but i like recorded i have like because i try to i try to set up a whole bunch of interviews and then give my time to edit yep. because if you don't know about podcast editing it is rough you know but the video yeah. podcast is you got to kind of be more straight up you know but it's it, i try to line it up but yeah i have i have well over 100 now and i'm excited about it and yeah do you feel like it's helped you learn a lot about welding because i've certainly picked up a lot of, yeah oh yeah <laughs> no, i've learned i've like i was funny before you before this meeting i just was editing a podcast that i had a conversation with an underwater welder um yeah. and it, it's so fascinating you know it's like even i i had the conversation once you know and but then listening back to this i, I still keep learning more and more and more Every single time I'll listen to something, I'll be like, man, that was a crazy conversation. And then I go back to edit and then I was like, man, this is a crazy conversation. I can't wait for people to hear this, you know, but it's, it, I've learned way more than I could have ever imagined about welding, you know, and it's just like, I, I, I know you can't learn everything. Like there's no possible way to know everything about welding, but I know a lot now. It's like I, in theory, like theory, uh, theoretically, like that's, that's the kind of knowledge I have. It's like, I would love to go and try all these different types of welding that I've, I've talked to people about, you know, it's like, but I, there's a lot that I haven't tried, but I would love to someday, like underwater welding, it would be dope to try. And then I would love, like, I have, I never went and did like shutdowns or things like that, but I would, I would love to try it, you know? It's like, there's all these things I would like to try it, but that wouldn't really be that feasible, you know? So I just like hearing about it now. Yeah, exactly. I did one with um, Pem Durgan, who was an underwater welder. And I was, you know, he just, he was just explaining little things. And, you know, I'd always wondered and always, you know, looked at videos online or YouTube and seen different things. But just when they're explaining how he teaches people and how he learned to weld, you know, seen, and some people have such incredible stories as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I love being selfish, you know, as bad as that sounds to say, I like being selfish when I'm a, when I'm interviewing people, because I get to get my questions answered, you know, it's like all these things that, you know, it's like, I'm, I've just been wondering about, or I want to learn more about, it's like, I get to be selfish and ask those questions because most of the time, the questions that I'm going to have, a bunch of other people will have that same question, but you know, they always say, be that person who asks, don't be that person who just sits there with a burning question and never gets it resolved. So like, that's, that's the way I approach podcasting is like, try to be selfish. And I try to, I try to ask the questions that I really want to know, because I feel like there's other people I'm, I'm novice enough that I know there's a bunch of other people that if they're not even up to my scale level or like knowledge level, like they probably have the same question, you know? Yeah, I don't know what the industry is like in sort of the USA at the moment, but it's quite a boom in the UK, especially the nuclear industry. And, you know, people, um, companies are struggling to get welders. Is that is that similar in the USA at the moment? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what the numbers were. I just did a an episode where they were saying like what the numbers of shortage, like we need like something around like 200 or 300,000 welders right now. It's like, that's the deficit that we have here, you know, and in uh, across the world, we know it's like everybody needs welders and, but it's, I feel like more people are getting interested in it, but I feel like the industry hasn't been evolving with the need, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, we need welders, but we're only going to pay $12 an hour. You know, it's like, oh, we need welders, but you know, it's like, you need five years experience, you know, it's, 
I love to poke fun at, at the industry. Cause I'm just like, these are the things that don't make any sense. You know, it's like, if you're desperate and you really need people, you got to serve them. You know, it's like, I'm going to start you off with a really good salary. We're going to teach you. We'll train you to come and work. And there's a lot of places that will train you and pay you to learn, you know, but there's a lot more people that are just like, Nope, uh, we're, we're just going to keep rolling with, churn and burn doesn't matter how many welders we go through uh there's never going to be enough i i it's there's a desperate need for people so i feel like the companies and like just if you need welders you need to be paying welders you need to be giving them resources to come be part of your team like it just needs to be easier to become a welder you know i, I that's my opinion is like if okay there's a problem what's the solution make it easier for people to learn, make it, make it more enticing for people to want to come and work for you. Like the thing I like about over in the UK, I hear about a lot is the safety regulations over there are like very strict, you know, yeah, it's like they're really, strict. they want to protect their workers, you know, and over here in the U S yeah, you'll get a really good benefit package of like, here's your awesome health insurance, vision, dental, all that stuff. But as far as safety equipment, like there's a lot of unsafe environments out here. And, you know, going through school, you don't have a PAP system and you don't have like, there's a, the toxic fumes are a huge problem and people just are like, yeah, just move your head. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff about the industry that is just not safe. And like, let's just try and make it more safe. You know? And that's what I love about automation. I talk to people about robots and cobots a lot and everyone's like, they're going to take our jobs. I'm like, no, nah, man, they're trying to like take the jobs that'll kill you. You know, they'll, they'll take the jobs that are putting you in danger, you know, and all you got to do is tell it what to do. Like you still have a job. It doesn't know how to weld, but if you tell it what you need it to do, it'll do it and it'll do it over and over and over and over again. And then you don't have to crawl in that hole, you know, like, yeah, I think anything new can be scary, though, especially if you've only been used to doing something one way for so long. You, you know, a lot of people don't want to change their ways. Absolutely. Like, it, change is scary. Like, it, it's, yeah. I know that. Like, I hate change, but I try to embrace it. You know, if, if I could be all pissed off and try to not, not, not change with the times, or I could just be like, you know what? Yep, this isn't my, this isn't what I would choose, or this isn't the, pathway that i think i would love to follow but if that's what i gotta do that's what i'm gonna do it's all about it's just like just going with the flow i'm a big flow guy i'll go with the flow you just tell me what to do but explain why you know it's like i want an explanation and good reasoning behind things but i'll go with the flow if it makes sense yeah okay then bo so tell me what's next for you in the future what are you thinking well, a big thing that I'm trying to do with, I mean, I definitely am going to try to get more, like I'm trying to get into the art side of welding because I've interviewed so many of these sculptors and I'm yeah. I'm obsessed with it. Like I'm just like, that would be so cool. And I, I always tell everyone, it's like my mind just doesn't work that way. Like pictures, like I'm not good with like drawing pictures, painting, anything like that. Like my mind's just not there. Like music, and lyrics and words all day long, you know, but I'm trying to force myself to get out there and start trying to just develop that part of my brain. And so I want to start doing art stuff, but I'm also going to make a bunch of like music related things. So I'm going to start making my own pedal boards. I'm going to try to make a steel guitar. I'm going to try to make yeah. stands, like just stuff where like my friends in the music industry, if you need it, I can make it, you know, but still with weld.com a big push that we're trying to do it like i'm trying to go to more events like i'm going to be going to scrap fest which is a scrap metal festival like art festival where it's all about sustainability because they make you come and source all of this metal from their scrap yard and you take it home build it, and bring it back, and then everyone gets to come look at it and they auction them off you know so like just showing people the different things that are out there that's not necessarily you know you, you don't not just being like oh you can either be a pipe welder you're going to be a structural welder you're going to be a manufacturing welder you know it's like 
I'm going to try to show people all the different cool things that you can go and do, you know, outside of that. That's my goal. That's, that's the next step for me is figuring out how to do that is, is the hard part, you know? Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's a great vision to have in your mind what you want to do next or, or what you plan to win because I don't know about yourself, but I'm always looking for the next thing that I want to do or looking for something to take up my time. Oh yeah. What's time, bro? What? I know. <laughs> I wish I had time. I mean that, and then I mean still making music and then I, yep. I have another podcast on the side um, that's about beer. Cause I, I've, I've been a big fan of craft beer for a long time and my dad has a bottle shop and then like, the band I'm in when things started opening up here afterwards, the only places you could go play music were breweries because they had outdoors and everyone could spread out yep. and everything. So we played breweries like nonstop for a year and we were making a small, like we had a little YouTube series going called Brews Rock where we would drink a bunch of beers and just talk about them. And it, it wasn't the most professional thing, but it was fun, you know, and it, let's try to make this just an, audio podcast and we'll go around and visit breweries and we've been doing like this year i think we just hit 25 different breweries we've visited and sat down and talked with either like the owner the head brewer or those people like showing people idea with my podcast where it's like hey here's all these pathways into the welding industry this is all these pathways into the brewing industry. It's like, if you want to make beer, here's how you do it. If you want to just sell beer, here's how you do it. I want to build a network of like these are all these valuable viewpoints on life, you know, and it doesn't matter what trade you're in. If it's the beer trade, if you're in the welding trade, no matter what, like my big thing I want to do is just help people see pathways, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, obviously you seem to have a lot of experience with podcasting. This is sort of my first venture into it and, you know, it's been good. You know, the editing can be quite difficult and quite time consuming. Um, you know, by the time you sit down, record the podcast and then edit it and upload everything, it, it can be quite time consuming, but also I, I am enjoying it and I do like listening back. Um, not always to my own voice, but definitely yeah. to the guests that come on. That can be quite, quite cringeworthy at times listening to myself, but. It, you'll get used to it. I mean, I've, I've, the only reason I'm used to it is like I've been recording music for years and years and years. So yeah. I have to be okay with my voice because. I've heard it for thousands and thousands of hours, you know, and, but as far as like the podcasting side, it's a labor of love. Like if you don't like it, like it, don't do it. Like you, no one's forcing you to make a podcast, you know, but as I love it, like, and yes, there are ups and downs. Like some days it's like, man, I really just don't want to sit and edit audio. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's hard. It's a struggle. But then there's some days where you're just like, you know what? all I want to do is sit back and edit audio all day. <laughs> you know, I have those days and I love like my podcast Wednesdays are my podcast days where I get to just sit and work on the podcast and edit, just reach out to other people, try to go on podcasts, all that kind of stuff. And it is a different world and it is a hard thing to do, but it's appreciated by people. It's a, it's, but you're not going to really know. Like, that's my favorite no. part about it is like for a long time, people are like, so how many people listen? And it's like, I don't know. I, I have no idea. And I, cause I didn't have access to see the back end. I just recorded it and sent it in and here you go. You know? And I loved that because it didn't matter who listened or not. And it, it never like podcasts, in my opinion, it's not about how many lessons you get and how many people are following you and all that kind of stuff. It's just about making something that is going to help the future generation. You know, it's like, this is an audio record. Like this is a record of information and knowledge. Like use it as that. It's like, you don't see people like, but people don't go to the library to be like, Ooh, you know what? I can't wait to tune in to this week's book. You know, it's yeah. like, but they find it like they'll find knowledge in books and read and learn from it. And that's what, Audio, like podcasts are it's for people like me who are dyslexic and have a hard time reading it's like i'll listen to an audiobook i'll listen to a podcast and then i can i could suck that information up but if i had to sit there and read this all in a book man i would not learn anything because it takes me like i have to read every page twice because i'm just like i forgot what i was reading and it's like yeah. I, I just 
I love podcasts and it's, it's a labor of love, but it is a love. Yeah. Okay. Then Bo. So another question I always ask is, can you tell me a funny story from the industry? Something that comes oh, into your mind. A funny story from the industry without getting in trouble. That's what yeah, I'm that's trying. The, that's the one big. <laughs> mm, well, one of my, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of funny, funny things from the industry. I, funny things have always just been the way, like dealing with clients has always been funny because it's just, it, it's comical to me. It's probably not comical to them in the moment, but it's the funniest thing I've ever encountered in my journey into welding is having a bar owner try to describe to me how to like how welding works. It's like, I was trying to, to un get them to understand distortion. I was like, yeah, if I weld that, like, that's cool, but it needs to be clamped so that it doesn't pull, you know, cause when you heat it up, it'll pull it in. He's like, no, it doesn't do that. And I said, like, Oh, Oh, okay. All Does right. Is it not? <laughs> Is it not? Uh, that's news to me. And then like having, I had a guy who wanted me to build, build something, but he wanted me to build it from the top down. I was like, okay, well, I don't know if you know, but you know, that's not really how things work. There's this thing called gravity, where if you try to just weld something up in the middle of the air, it's not going to hold on to anything. It's got to have a base to work off of. So I'm going to try to build this from the bottom up and uh, but if if I figure out a way to build something in the middle of the air down, I'll definitely let you know. But that that's been a, kind of the extent of the funniness. It's just the way that people, like the requests that people have. I'm just like, man, I, I have no idea. Like, I don't want to tell you you're dumb. You know, it's like, I'm just going to be like, well, maybe there's a different solution we can find. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I think that's the funniest thing. Um, but definitely like in school a funny moment would be like there was <laughs> just being dumb yeah. just walking around with one of my fellow students and we were looking in someone's booth and then we uh someone said it's like hey don't touch the the wire when someone's welding because it'll shock you and it's just like like for off the drive wheel you know and yeah. and we're just like yeah right and there's boop, just get shocked right away and it's like well that's that's a way to learn but it, you know just dumb dumb things like that where it's like don't do that because it'll do this and it's like well let me see for myself you know <laughs> let's try that out yeah <laughs> yeah it's like ah, i don't believe that oh. so now i just take people's word for it you know it's like yeah, yeah maybe i won't try that <laughs> No, but thank you very much for taking time out of your day to come on. Um, it's been brilliant to speak to you. Obviously, lots of experience with podcasting. Um, something I'm hoping to build up over the next few weeks or months. Um, well, I'm here for you if you ever have questions. Like I, there's not a ton of welding podcasts out there, but yeah. there's other welding podcasts, and like I'm, I'm like we all gotta i'd like i'm here to help you in any way i always try to say to anybody else i talk to on any other welding podcast i'm like hey if you need help with audio video whatever you know I, like that's my world so i i try to be a resource for other people there's no competition we all just are here yeah. trying to like it, welding needs everything it can get so when you said you were starting this podcast and wanted me to come on, I was like, heck yeah, I would love to. Like, I want your podcast to be successful so we can grow this industry. So, yeah, well, um, look, I'll be certain to check out the, the well.com app. And, you know, if, if, if you would just share, share the podcast when it goes live, you know, that would be great. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, uh, do you do just to YouTube or are you doing audio versions too? Y yeah. YouTube and Spotify are the two that I use. Cool. Cool. Well, um, when it comes out, just let me know. Will do. Thank you very much, Bo. And um, I hope you have a good day. I hope you do too. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Yeah, talk to you soon. Cheers, mates. Cheers. Bye.